Hi everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on some A-level content, specifically the Persinian corpuscle. This comes under the receptors topic right before you look at the nervous system and it's part of the A2 syllabus. So when we're looking at receptors or sensory receptors, as we might refer to them, we're talking about specialized receptors which detect stimuli and respond, but they produce an electrical or chemical discharge. They're known as biological transducers, which basically means that they're able to convert the energy from a stimulus into an electrochemical signal. And they can do that because the stimulus opens or closes ion channels, and that leads to localized changes in what we call the membrane potential. And that process is known as receptor potentials. So receptor potentials are graded and they're not self-propagating, but sense cells can amplify them depending on how strong the stimulus was. And so that can generate the action potentials. If you've not watched my video on rest and action potential already, then click the link on your screen now and watch that and that should make a bit more sense. Ultimately, the stimulus is transduced into a nerve impulse and the frequency of these nerve impulses or how quickly they happen is dependent on the stimulus strength. So this part of the video is designed to allow you to understand the locations of these receptors and also for you to understand their functions. Not shown on the image on the right are photoreceptors. You learn about these when you look at the eye and photoreceptors are there to detect light and the receptor cells you'll learn about are rods and cones. We also have chemoreceptors, again, not really shown on that diagram there, but these are responsible for detecting chemicals. You'll learn about chemoreceptors when you look at the extrinsic control of the heart. So essentially how the heart beats when we've been doing exercise and so on. In your skin, you've got thermoreceptors and these detect temperature and we've also got mechanoreceptors and they respond to physical pressure, stretch or vibrations. It's actually the stimulation of these receptors that leads to the establishment of this generator potential or the impulse that I talked about earlier. And with all of these receptors, when a stimulus is present, it will affect ion channels in the membrane that then generates this action potential. Again, you can go and watch my action potential video and that will make a bit more sense as to how that happens. So if we look specifically at the Persinian corpuscle, these are found all over our skin and they're responsible for detecting pressure changes. They're classed as mechanoreceptors and so they're sensitive to things like pressure as well as vibrations. They're relatively large and so you can see them under an optical microscope, but they are structurally quite simple. You have this sensory nerve ending surrounded by what you can see is those layers. It's a capsule of connective tissue layers known as lamellae. And in between those layers, you've got this lymph-like fluid. When the Persinian corpuscle is under pressure, the capsule will deform and stretch. And that's what leads to what we call depolarization. And that particular cell will convert that depolarization into the action potentials. So under the microscope, it looks a little bit like this. I appreciate this image might be a little bit blurry, but you can probably see those kind of layers of the capsule that I'm talking about. So most of my students, I think, find it useful to know what the various steps of the stimulation are. As mentioned earlier, the Persinian corpuscle will respond to pressure. So if you look at the top diagram in the middle, you can see that that stimulus has got localized pressure. And that pressure causes the lamellae to stretch and deform. The underlined words, by the way, on the slide now are the ones that they expect you to have in the mark scheme. So it's quite important that you note these down. When that stretching occurs in the membrane, sodium ions to diffuse into the neuron. The bigger the stimulation or the bigger the pressure, the more of these ion channels will open and more sodium will flood in, generating that action potential. And that basically leads to what we call the depolarization of the neuron. And that's what's known as the generator potential. Again, in my video for action potential and resting potential, I talk about a threshold being reached. And so that threshold is like a minus 55 minimum uh, millivolt that it has to reach. And as soon as that's reached, the action potential is then generated. So I've got a five marker here, which I think would probably be quite useful for you to have a go at. The question reads, explain, so say how pressure on the skin is perceived for five marks. So if you pause the video now and just give that a go, just to see that you can mention all the key terms that you need to know.
So in order to get the full five marks for this question, you would have to talk about the pressure stretching and deforming the Pacinian corpuscle. The next point would be to relate that to the sodium ion channels opening and sodium basically moving into the neuron. And you could say that they move down the concentration gradient as well. And that's what it's that movement of the sodium ions that creates that action potential or the generator potential. So that's, again, like a potential fifth point that you can mention. And then you could also make reference to the fact that if that generator potential is above the threshold potential, then the action potentials will basically be conducted along the neuron to the brain to then cause a response to happen. So I hope that was really useful for you all. Please check out the other videos on my channel and share them with anyone else who might find them useful. Feel free to leave me any questions below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.